This video is brought to you by SaleRite. Welcome to part two of the video series, Learning to Sew. We're gonna get started here and we're gonna show you how to sew on some scrap fabric. We're gonna show you how to start your stitch and we're also gonna show you how to make turns, whether it be in the fabric as we're sewing or from a stop position with the needle buried in the fabric. So let's get started and show you how to sew. We pulled some scrap fabric from the Sayerite loft. This is a fairly light fabric and we're going to fold it over to two layers. You always need to consider the weight of the fabric when you begin your sewing. Since this is a light fabric, we need to go with a fairly medium uh, thread like a V69 and a size 16 needle. So that's what we have in the sewing machine now. Two layers is a good place to start because we can determine if the stitch tension is correct with two layers better than we can with anything else. So when you put your fabric underneath the foot, we'll need to lower the presser foot via the presser foot lever at the top. So we'll lower the presser foot, and you'll notice that there are two threads that are dangling out from behind the, the fabric at this point. One thread is underneath the fabric, and that's the bobbin thread, and the other thread is on top, that's coming from the needle. It's always important to hold the threads prior to your first stitch, that way you don't get a rat's nest underneath. So hold your threads and start sewing. Once you have one or two stitches done, you can let go of the thread and continue to sew. Now I've sewn for a few inches here, and what we want to do is we want to lift the presser foot and check our thread tension. So we'll pull the fabric out, and notice as I roll the balance wheel, that lets me to pull the fabric out without having the threads get caught. So sometimes I roll the balance wheel back and forth to pull the fabric out easier. Let's check the top stitch here. You'll notice that there are no knots on the top side, or actually I see a little knot there. So there is a knot a little bit on the top side. The bottom side looks great. So I think, and you can see a little knot here, so this is about perfect tension. Now if the tension were poor, we may have loose stitches on the bottom side. That would mean that there's not enough upper tension with the upper tension assembly. If the knots were being pulled on the top side through the fabric, it would mean we have too much upper tension and we'd have to turn this knob counterclockwise to loosen the tension. Let's show you what it's like when you get a bad stitch on the bottom side. Let's roll this knob several rotations. On this machine, this has about six full rotations. Some home sewing machines only have about one rotation. The Sarite Ultrafeet has a lot of versatility for the upper tension assembly. Let's lower the foot again. It's always important to lower the foot prior to sewing, and we notice our needle is out of the fabric. So lower the foot. Now, we don't necessarily have to hold on to the trending threads because the threads weren't cut. So I'm not gonna have to worry about that. We probably won't get a rat's nest because of that. So now we'll start sewing, and we'll notice on the back side, the stitch will not be nearly as nice. With the needle lowered, we have to make sure that the needle's out, obviously, to pull the fabric out. So I'll roll the balance wheel towards me to make sure the needle is out of the fabric. When the needle's out of the fabric, we'll lift our presser foot. Now to pull the fabric out, again, we'll wiggle the balance wheel, and that allows us to pull the fabric out nicely. Top side, eh, it doesn't look that great. Look at that. Bottom side, not nearly enough tension. That is a major lack of tension. So what we'll do is we'll put the fabric in again. We'll lower the presser foot. We're gonna increase the upper tension. One, two, three, four. That's two full revolutions, four half revolutions. And now let's sew again. Let's take a look at it. Up, oh, the needle's down. We need to roll the balance wheel so the needle's up. Lift the presser foot and check again. Beautiful. Now let's do some rotating of the fabric. Lower the presser foot. We don't have to hold the trailing threads because we didn't cut them. And let's roll. As we sew, we can actually make turns. It's not a good idea to have the needle slightly buried in the fabric and then make a sharp turn because the needle may bend and then when you press on the foot pedal, you may break a needle or hit something metal down below. So in a stop position, let's say we've sewn for a while, and we want to make a 90 degree turn. We'll bury the needle with, by hand with the balance wheel. We can lift our foot. We can pivot on the deep part of the needle, in other words, the part that's reinforced because it's thicker at the top. We can lower our presser foot and then continue to sew. 
In the position where the needle is up, if we wanted to make a 90 degree turn without bearing the needle, we lost our position. Notice it's not going to be a really nice 90 degree because of the fact that we don't have, we didn't keep the needle buried in the position, so this is too long of a stitch there. But this is a perfect 90 degree. All right, we have tension set appropriately. We are actually ready to sew. Now I'm not going to get a new piece of fabric because we basically set tension for this. So I'm going to cut my threads and we're, let's act like we're now ready to start our project. It's a good idea to cut threads leaving at least about four inches of trailing threads. All right, we're going to put the fabric underneath the foot. Now I've cut my thread so I have to hold on to the trailing threads. Lower my presser foot. And the official thing you should do when you start sewing is actually do a reverse stitch to lock your stitch in place. It's not a good idea to just sew without locking the stitch in place because that end of the stitching may come loose. So we're going to sew a couple stitches, let go of my trailing threads, and we're going to sew a couple stitches more, and we're going to put the machine in reverse via the stitch length lever, and we're going to sew in reverse. Then we're going to put the machine back and forward, maximum stitch length, six millimeters for the altar feed, and sew forward. Now, let's say this is where we need to stop sewing. What I should do there is I should do some bar tacking as well. So I'm going to put the machine in reverse to lock the stitch in place. And now our stitch is locked in both the forward position where we started and the in position so it will not easily come undone. This machine is a zigzag straight stitch machine. Let's put it in zigzag and show you how that's done as well. Remember the stitch width lever is up here so we're going to put the machine in zigzag by flipping this lever or moving this lever all the way to the left. If you're going to switch from a straight stitch to a zigzag make sure the needles out of the fabric. It already was because we didn't have the fabric underneath the foot. Now we'll lower the presser foot, we'll hold on to our trailing threads, we'll sew, we'll do some reversing to lock our stitch in place, and then at the end we do some reversing again to lock our stitch in place. And that's a zigzag stitch. Now that's the maximum zigzag for this sewing machine. Here we, you notice we caught the trailing thread. We have a lot of threads on the back side, you can just pull those out. A zigzag stitch is typically used in sail making and some dressmakers use it as a decorative stitch. Now let's move on and sew something that a lot of our customers think is difficult to sew, which is a vinyl mesh material. It is not difficult. Let's move on and show you that next. A vinyl mesh material is extremely easy to sew. In fact, it sews like butter is what I always say. We put it under the presser foot, we'll lower the presser foot, trap our threads with our finger, and sew. Make sure you do some reversing if this is an official stitch. Sew all the way through, reverse at the end. Now let's switch to, from zigzag to straight stitch. Let's say the needle's buried in the fabric. I don't want to switch now because watch what happens. See the needle bend? Not good. Make sure the needle's out of the fabric when you switch. Now I can switch to straight stitch. We can turn corners as we sew and then when we're done, do some reversing and look how beautiful the stitch is from zigzag to straight stitch. Bottom side looks great too. And that's how easy it is to sew a stitch. The next video series is seaming. That's coming up next.